You know, here in the Midwest, we try to find simple solutions to difficult problems. And if we can't, then we innovate. We stay in the lead of these technologies. In Minnesota, we have the courage to try out new things. The last 10 years, we've already had a reduction of one large power plant. We did not study a scenario that had no renewable in it. I think the willingness to be progressive, for me, it's the right thing to do right now, and it's kind of the right side of history. The city of Rochester has some ambitious environmental targets set for the city. My name is Kevin Bright. I'm the Energy and Sustainability Director for the Destination Medical Center and the city of Rochester. Mayo Clinic is really a leader in terms of sustainability here in our community. They've started implementing a range of energy conservation measures that have had a profound impact on citywide energy use. And Mayo's progress has been realized on a campus that's almost 100 years old in some cases. Think about our utility operations. They really take pride in what they serve across the street. My name's Brett Gordon. I'm section head in facilities management here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. It can be life and death situations. When you've got people in the ORs, our staff, our, our surgeons, and those patients rely on reliable power to make sure the lights stay on, make sure the equipment stays on, all the monitoring, but also making sure the temperatures are right, the humidity's right. There's a, there's a great deal of reliance on energy. Well, this is our main chiller and turbine hall right here. Franklin Heating Station produces steam, electricity, and chilled water to basically power, heat, and cool all of the facilities on our Rochester Mayo Clinic downtown campus. About 50% of our chillers are electric driven, and about half of them are steam driven. I think what makes it unique from a lot of plants around the country is that it's been utilizing a combined heat and power technology for almost 100 years now. This plant, compared to your normal electrical power plant, is about twice as efficient. We've been doing it for a long time, but we're always trying to improve. Since 2012, we've really had a concerted effort to reduce our energy footprint. One of the main strategies is called retro commissioning. It's going back through your existing buildings and making sure they work the way they were designed. Really pushed hard to incorporate LED lighting. We've also done things like duct sealing. We took a baseline year of 2010, what our energy intensity for our existing buildings is, and we set a goal to reduce that by 20% by the year 2020. We met that goal in 2018, so two years early, and then in true Mayo Clinic fashion, we right away set a new goal. And that new goal is to be 30% reduction by the year 2025. I think if the goals weren't ambitious, then everybody would be doing them already. Um, it takes leadership to set ambitious targets. I think the city of Rochester is fortunate that it has a municipal utility uh, that is pretty progressive. What's great about a municipal utility is you get to have community involvement in it. I think that the community really pushed the envelope on what they expect out of Rochester. One of those step goals in our 2030 plan is a 10 megawatt solar farm that we're gonna locate within the city. Our city of Rochester transit team is starting to think of ways that they can transition from fossil fuels to renewable or electric fed vehicles. We stay in the lead of these technologies in introducing our uh, scooters and bike sharing and car sharing. It reduces that dependency on non-renewable energy sources. Our transit system is a very uh, good system in the city of Rochester, and we are growing. And part of that, we are implementing a rapid transit system that will be in our downtown area. It's a four-mile loop that will run through the center of the city, and it's meant to move the 35,000 people that work downtown in a reliable, safe, and environmentally friendly manner. The buses that we are proposing as part of rapid transit will be electric vehicles uh, that can hold up to 120 people. That's 120 cars that probably will not be on the road causing pollution downtown. 
It's also exciting to see the sustainable design approaches permeating into the private development market. We're here at the Berkman. There are 350 units of hotel and multifamily housing. My name is Chris Osmondson. I'm the director of development with Alatus, the development corporation that constructed the Berkman. This building is Silver LEED. LEED certification requires a lot of different things. It involves energy consumption. All the facilities in the building are LED fixtures, building materials, recycling materials. We used a tree, uh, it was a large tree, that, that needed to be removed from the site for this decorative purpose. We have a low flow faucet, water, gas consumption, all of those types of things. It's been pretty tremendous achieving the, the LEED sustainability. Uh, but also passing that benefit really on to the resident here. So it, it allows someone to probably have a 50% reduction in their utility bill. For this to be the largest building in this area that has that certification is, is really a huge step forward in terms of a renewable strategy, you know, adopting 100% renewable energies by 2030. I just think that's a, a really big step forward that, frankly, is probably not a majority position, but needs to be.